Now to a problem that's being called a ticking time bomb. More than 80 years after the discovery of penicillin, there's now growing concern that one day antibiotics will no longer work at all, not just because they're overprescribed in humans, but because they're being used very often in factory farming. Katie Couric is here now with a preview of her two-part CBS News investigation. Good morning, Katie. Maggie, good morning. Nice to see you. you know, as you mentioned earlier, the CDC says antibiotic resistance is one of the most pressing issues facing Americans today, and there's growing concern agriculture may be playing a major role in this, with huge amounts of antibiotics being given to healthy livestock to prevent disease and to make them grow bigger faster. Many say it's a time, high time we take a closer look at what is happening on the farm. It really sank in. Uh, when, when I had a, a, a near-death experience. Russ Kramer, a hog farmer in central Missouri, says his misfortune began when he was gored in the knee by an angry boar on his family farm. Not long after, he developed a strep infection that baffled his doctors. We tried, uh, you know, lincomycin, we tried streptomycin, erythromycin, amoxicillin, another tetracycline, and just did not phase that bug. The answer he found came from the boar. The animal had been fed low doses of penicillin, spawning a strain of strep that was resistant to antibiotics. That drug-resistant infection was passed to Kramer. I was evolving uh, these, these resistant um, superbugs, basically. You may not have close contact to animals like Russ Kramer does, but scientists believe that more and more Americans are at risk from the widespread practice of feeding low levels of antibiotics to healthy livestock. It makes the animals grow bigger, faster, and is used to prevent disease in crowded factory farms like these. Why is this a dangerous practice for humans? Any time a bacteria gets exposed to antibiotics, they actually learn how to resist it. It's almost like a computer virus. It spreads incredibly fast. Antibiotic resistance, whether it's in humans or animals, is um, something we've worked very hard to make sure that we're continually improving, keeping our house in order and doing the right thing. Happy pigs, aren't you? Since his virulent infection, Kramer has stopped using antibiotics for his livestock and converted his barns. To actually go into a, a hog building or into a pasture and enjoy being around your animals because they're healthy, I wouldn't trade that for anything. So he's a farmer who's around livestock all the time. That's this right. This is something that we all need to worry about, don't well, we? Well, that's right. You know, we all have heard that you have to use antibiotics judiciously, and there's concern that humans are being overprescribed them for everything when they don't really work for viral infections. But in livestock, there's a lot of concern as well. People liken it to putting it in your child's cereal Ugh. to keep him or her from getting sick because as we heard in the piece, it teaches bacteria basically to outsmart the antibiotic and then it creates these superbugs both in livestock and in people. And it's a really dangerous uh, proposition that health experts are quite concerned about. But how does this drug-resistant bacteria go from the farm to all of us? Well, it can either go, it can be airborne, it can be in the water supply, and it can even come from the meat from those animals. And there's concern that people can get uh, these sort of bacterial infections that are antibiotic resistance, resistant by either handling contaminated meat or ingesting undercooked meat. So it can spread in a variety of ways. Knowing this, and, and even though the CDC calls it such a problem, why do farmers continue to do it? Well, factory farmers insist, and other farmers that who use antibiotics, that they use small amounts, low doses, and it keeps their herd healthy, and it keeps the cost down, and it makes them, as I mentioned, grow bigger, faster, so they really defend the industry defends the use, but a lot of experts say, you know, it's really because many of these animals are being kept in unsanitary conditions and they're trying to produce more livestock to produce more meat. And it's really a practice that needs to, to be reconsidered. Katie Couric. Thanks, Katie. Uh, thanks, Maggie, for having me on. And we have a two-part series beginning tonight. Yes, we want to let everybody know that you can see part one of Katie's report tonight on the CBS Evening News.